مر الزمان تألقا وأضاء للدنيا طريقا مشرقا وهدى من الرحمن يهدينا به للصالحات وللمكارم والتقى هذا كتاب الله أعذب من هل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to the 11th part of this series where we are looking at the explanation of the 40 hadith pertaining to the virtues and the rulings of the Quran uh, In this hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said القرآن شافع مشفع that the Quran it is an intercessor that will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وماحل مصدق and it is an adversary that will be believed in. من جعله أمامه قاده إلى الجنة That whoever places the Qur'an in front of him, he will lead him to paradise. ومن جعله خلف ظهره ثاقه إلى النار And the one who places it behind his back, then he will push him to the hellfire. And this authentic hadith reported in At-Tabarani. So the hadith begins by saying Al-Qur'an shafi'un mushaffa' That this is a, uh, the Qur'an will intercede on behalf of those who are close to the Quran. Now, uh, what does this mean? How will the Quran intercede? The Quran is a book, its word is kalimat. How will it intercede? Some scholars they explain this by saying the Quran will take on a physical form on the day of judgment and it will argue on your behalf and it will intercede for, the, for those who used to recite it on a, on a daily and nightly and they reflect upon its meanings and try to act upon its teachings. And not just that is shafi' but is mushaffa', meaning it will be accepted. As an, uh, as, an, as, a, as an interceder. But it's also mahilun musaddaq. Mahil meaning is an adversary. It, will be, it could be an enemy to you on the day of judgment. It could be someone who will argue against you. And when the Quran argues against you, it is musaddaq. It will be believed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning if you are a person who uh, mistreated the Quran, ignored its teachings, then it will be a proof against you on the day of judgment. And that is further explained by the last part of the hadith, a beautiful subhanAllah, we reflect upon these words. Man ja'alahu amamahu qadahu ilal jannah. Whoever places the Quran in front of him, it will lead him to paradise. Now reflect upon this meaning. Whoever places the Quran in front of him, it will lead him to paradise. Meaning that the person allows the Quran to guide him. The Quran allows the person allows the Qur'an to guide him. The Qur'an is his leader. Whatever the Qur'an states, he believes that to be the truth. Whatever the Qur'an states to be falsehood, he believes it to be falsehood. So he approaches the Qur'an with a, with a complete blank slate, which is completely free from misconceived or, or, or preconceived notions of what is right and what is wrong, what is correct and what is incorrect. He is one of those people who already knows and believes, well, I know what is right and what is wrong, and he goes to the Qur'an to reaffirm what he already believes in. No. Man ja'alahu amamahu. The, the true person of the Qur'an, he places the Qur'an in front of him. The Qur'an is, the, purely, is only the Qur'an that guides him in his life. And the person who does that, qadahu ila jannah It will lead him to paradise. وَمَنْ جَعَلَهُ خَلْفَ ظَهْرِهِ But the one who places it behind him, that it will only drag him to the fire, it will only push him to the hellfire, because this person feels as though he is in no need of the Quran. And so he seeks his guidance from other sources. So what do we learn? What do we take away from this hadith? We should reflect upon our relationship with the Quran and ask ourselves the question, do we make the Quran the source of our guidance? Do we make the Quran the thing that leads us in our lives, really? Do we make the Qur'an and give it that status? If we find that we seek our guidance from our own sort of initiatives, then we have a problem. We could be amongst those, who, subhanAllah, who have placed the Qur'an behind our backs. So let us, inshallah, be amongst those who allow the Qur'an to guide us. And we approach the Qur'an in a state of need, realizing that it is through the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can only be guided. And if we seek our guidance through another source, we will only fall into misguidance uh, because the hadith says whoever places it behind him, it will lead him to the hellfire. In the next uh, reminder, inshallah, we will speak about how uh, w when a person has memorized the Quran and has learned the Quran, the more he memorizes and the more he understands, his level in paradise will be higher. 
His level in paradise will be high. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who place the Quran in front of them as their source of guidance and to that we will be inshallah be amongst those who the Quran will intercede on our behalf and the Quran will drive us to paradise inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. للصالحات وللمكارم والتقى نور على مر الزمان تأ...